Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net. Today I'm going to walk you through the sometimes messy process of properly repacking the bearings on your trailer. Now it's particularly important, especially for marine type application. Now there's not a whole lot involved on this, but you will need to make sure you've got plenty of gloves and a whole box of rags because it is messy. Beyond that, you want to pick up a high quality grease, and we'll talk more about that later. But for right now, let me go ahead and lift this up, get that tire out of the way, and we'll dive into this project. All right, guys, more than likely your trailer has one of three different type caps on the end of it. One is just the standard cap. The second type, like I have, is what they call a bearing buddy. And then the third one is a cap with a rubber insert, and then it has a zerk fitting on that particular hub, and the grease flows through it to get further up into the bearing actual races themselves. Now, if your trailer was only set up with the dust cover, the buddy bearing, well, it's a good upgrade for it. So at least you can increase the amount of grease that's in there. But the downside of this, it only fills from the outside. So the grease that is the oldest is the, what's still been running and is getting abused on the bearings inside. And just by adding more to it, well, you're really not flushing that out. And that's the reason you need to repack your bearings so often. Because think of it like a, a car engine or a truck engine where, okay, your car goes through X amount of oil and you just add oil when it needs it. Well, if you did that over an extended period of time, eventually the oil that's in there is going to break down, turn into sludge, and then lock up your engine. Well, if your hub isn't that much different because grease only has so long of a lifespan. After a while, it breaks down, it starts to get contaminants in it from the natural wear of the bearings, and then it's going to fail. And that's what you don't want to happen. As you can see in these pictures, it is possible to lose your entire wheel and then all of a sudden your four-wheel trailer is turned into a three-wheel trailer. And in this particular example, that's exactly what happened. Now this particular trailer, it has a fitting on the end that you can just barely see where that nut is that injects grease back into that race. But obviously there was not enough grease in there to get the job done. And eventually that outer race or that outer bearing failed, ate away the locking nut, even though it was still held in place by that cotter pin and the entire rim came off. And that is more than just a big pain in the butt, it's extremely dangerous. So I would recommend you go in and do this at least once a year. Now the grease that I've decided to go with, it really doesn't matter to the manufacturer, but you want the best rating that you can get in a high temperature application. The one that I went with, is an NLGI rating, and the rating itself is a GC-LB. That's one of the top ones you want to aim for, regardless of the manufacturer. So let's get this buddy bearing knocked off and get that hub removed and get this one cleaned up. Now, as you're pulling this apart, it's better to take off any dirt that you have on the outside now. That way you don't have to try to extract it from the, uh, the grease and the bearing later. What I'm doing is using a soft blow hammer and I'm just hitting it kind of at an angle. It's the best way I know to get one of these out of there. Because once you get to that edge, then we can use either a pie bar or a screwdriver, or if you are patient enough, eventually it's just gonna just knock off like that. All right guys, not being boisterous, but this one's in really good shape. I would know because this is my trailer and we go through this process every year. Now, if yours has been abused, it's going to be just jet black or worse, it's going to be completely empty. But this one has the appropriate amount of grease in it. It is not completely worn out, but we're still going to repack it anyway because this is about preventative maintenance. Best advice I can give you here is just clean as you go to minimize the chaos. And no, I'm not cutting these off. I'm just straightening them out using a set of side cutters. Now you can reuse this cotter pin to a certain extent. Once or twice, okay. Beyond that, replace it. Because that is the key to holding that outer nut on. 
we go through all this maintenance because we don't want to be that guy in the middle of July sitting on the side of the road with only three of the four wheels on his trailer. Looks like this is probably time number one for it to be taken apart, so I think we're good. Now before we pull this, notice it has just a little bit of play in it, and that's what we actually want. So it should not be any more than just barely finger tight. So we should easily be able to take this off with our hands. Even though the end of our axle is a little bit boogered up, it still comes off just by using our fingers. Not in too bad a shape, considering this trailer was built in 1986. Now that washer has a fair amount of wear on it, guys. I didn't catch that last time, so I think we're going to replace it. But hopefully yours doesn't look like that. It should be flat. See what happens if you don't go in and check these things so often? That could have been a real problem down the road. All right, guys, she is off. Let's take the hub and our outer bearing over to the bench, get it completely pulled apart, cleaned up, and then repacked. So now we just need to pry out this seal and take a look at the bearing to see if we can repack it and just put in a new seal along with a new washer or decide if we want to go ahead and replace the bearings, the seals, everything with a kit like this. So I'm going to carry this over to a vise, clamp it down, pop out that seal, and then we'll take a look inside. So we've got our seal popped out. Now let's take a look at the bearing, or our inner bearing that is. The bearing looks to be in good shape. Let's start clearing out the old grease, getting the hub cleaned out. Then we want to inspect the races to make sure there's no pits or any kind of damage on those. And what you're looking for are any imperfections or grooves or pitting on the surface of your race, both in your outer and your inner bearing surfaces or race surfaces. And as you can see, this one's in really good shape because I replaced them last year. So we kind of knew that going in that this was going to be one of those hubs that was maintained properly. Not showing off, just showing you that a trailer built in 1986, as long as you keep up with it, will last a lifetime. So that being said, we're going to repack the bearings reuse it, and that way all we have to replace is just the seal. Now I am upgrading the seal a little bit. This is what they call a three-step type seal. It's got three lips on the inside, and you'll notice on the outside, it seals the outside. Now I know that's a little extreme, but if you're constantly having to back your trailer down in the water and leaving it for any length of time, it can find its way in there and start to corrode around that metal area going into the hub itself. A rubber on metal on metal that isolates it and keeps that from happening. Next, we're gonna get out our bearing packer, make sure we've got a plenty of fresh grease in it. You can pick these up just about anywhere. Most automotive places carry them. And what we're gonna do is place the bearing in this way Tighten it down, hold it in place like that. And we're going to put pressure, a fair amount of pressure on it. And it's going to force the new grease up into it, forcing out the old grease and any contaminants we may have in it. Now keep in mind, grease is pretty viscous. So if it's cold where you are, you may want to consider bringing in your grease, letting it come up to room temperature. Otherwise, you're going to have a really tough time forcing out the old grease and getting the new stuff in there. So constant pressure and eventually it will start pushing out the old grease. Let's take a look and see what we've got so far. All right. See down in there where it's starting to push out the old grease? We're making progress. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> let's see what we've got 
as you can see, is pushed out the old grease. And now we have new grease down in the surfaces. Told you this is gonna be a little bit messy. One down, one to go. Same process. Now, if you were having to replace your bearings, this is especially important to use the packing system to force out any air and then force in grease around all those different areas of the bearing itself. Otherwise, you put it in there dry and you may just have some grease on the outside. The bearing is not gonna last as long as it should unless it's completely packed full of grease, which is what this accomplishes. I mentioned before, my grease of choice is this red stuff. Super sticky, lasts a long time. The grade, one more time, is a GC-LB. That is what you're after. A very messy procedure, but I'd much rather do this now than be stuck on the side of the road going, what am I gonna do now? with a burned out bearing or a wheel that is headed off into the uh, unknown. The rest of it's pretty easy, guys. All we're gonna do next is load up our race in the inner part of the hub with some fresh grease. Drop in our bearing. Now we can tap in our new seal. We just wanna do it flush with the hub. That should do. Next. Let's go ahead and pack in that area in between the bearing and the seal, making sure you get it all the way around the seal itself. Now let's get this card out of the way and then just put it back together. Now there is one more surface we need to take care of and inspect a little bit more, and that's this area right back here, because that is where that rear seal is riding, so to speak. And if you noticed, when I took the hub off, it had some grease on the outside. So that tells me that it was starting to fail. Now, why does it fail? I see either A, it runs out of grease and then starts to burn the seal, or B, it may have some pitting like this does. So what do I need to do about that? Well, you can go through and replace your axle. Or what I'm gonna do to get a little bit more longevity out of mine is get some emery cloth and then clean up that surface right there. So I've got it cleaned up, but I can go ahead and tell you it still has some pitting. I can feel it and I can see it. So that means it's gonna eat through that seal faster than it should. So that tells me, well, next year, we're gonna have to do something about that axle. But for right now, we're gonna let it go with that new seal, the new grease. It should make it through the season. But after that, I think I'm gonna have to go ahead and replace these. Hey, it's part of boat ownership. Well, with this cleaned up, let's go ahead and get it greased up and get it put back together. Let's bring our hub in. When you're placing it over that end of the axle, kind of turn it as you're doing it so it doesn't grab one of the edges of the seal and pull it the wrong direction. Let's get on our outer bearing a new washer, and then our castle nut. Now we're gonna bring this castle nut in, not too tight, just enough to snug it up, rotate the hub a couple of times. That way we're gonna get the bearings to seat fully under their races. Give you an idea how much tension I'm putting, just using my finger. Not much. Now we're gonna rotate a couple of times Maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. And each time I'm doing that, it's forcing out a little bit more of the grease and seating it against the race. All right. Now we got something. Now we want to back that off about an eighth to a quarter of a turn. Now you got a lit, just a little bit of play, but it spins easily. One finger, no tension at all, except for the grease being in there. So we had it roughly there. I'm gonna back it off just a little bit more. 
to here. Just like that. That feels good. And so we don't have to wear out our grease gun. Let's go ahead, fill up the cavity of the buddy bearing. Because honestly, as much grease as I've already got in there, we shouldn't have to add any when we put it back together. Because that cavity is pretty much full. See how that center section was starting to come out? That tells me that it's got it forced up in there. In other words, it's full. And on this particular buddy bearing, you had a, a raised edge, and that'll show you that you've got it all the way down. And it looks like mine needs to go just a little bit further. That is it. Just to make sure, let's give it a couple of squirts with the grease gun. Yeah, she's already starting to ride out. Pre-packing, it made all the difference. It was right where it needed to be, and now we're sure. Last but not least, get your cover back on. All right, guys, that is going to wrap this one up. All I have to do now is just reinstall the tire and then get those lug nuts torqued down. Well, listen, if you need these parts or any other parts for your boat, why don't you come see us at Boats.net and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hey, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Boats.net and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.